Hey everyone, BJ Course. This is the Hollywood Moment at Home Edition. On today's show, we're talking to the legendary executive producer, Ken Ehrlich, and we're talking about the CBS special, Let's Go Crazy, a Grammy salute to Prince. On Tuesday, April 21st on CBS, there's a tribute to Prince, Let's Go Crazy, the Grammy salute to Prince, that'll air at 9 p.m. Tell us about this project and how exciting that we're all going to be going crazy for a moment on CBS. Well, BJ, like all of these shows, these tribute shows, we've done six or seven of them now, usually, not all of them, but most of them have taken place like two nights after the Grammys because we obviously have a great number of talent uh, artists that are here in town that will stay over and do this show. So there's there's an economy of scale, but there have been a couple, we didn't do that way, but, but we did the Beatles, we did Stevie Wonder, we did Elton, we did the Bee Gees, we did a Motown show, we did an Aretha show, and they're labors of love. I mean, these are artists that everyone, everybody that I just named, uh, uh, at a relative time in my life that I, I, some of them I don't choose to go back that far, but I mean, come on. I mean, I was 12 years old listening to Frank Sinatra and, you know, the, the early Capitol records that he made in the, in the middle 50s and thinking, I never thought that I would ever meet him, which I did do. I had him on the Grammys, but, uh, or, and then, I mean, I, rem I can remember going out and getting the first Beatle album. I can remember going out and I worked with the Bee Gees in Chicago when I was, when I was doing soundstage. Uh, and Prince was one of was one of those artists that I was probably already doing this. I think I was already living out here when Prince kind of started early '80s. So it wasn't as though you know I was a kid growing up on him. Um, but you know I just had I, I I just loved what he did and what he represented. Uh, so to be able to to uh, to do this despite the fact that he's been gone four years on April 21st uh, is uh, it, it really was pretty wonderful to do especially since we did work together about a half a dozen times while he was alive so um, uh, just again a joy to be able to to put together a show built around this great catalog of music that he created now, Maya Rudolph is going to be hosting. What should we expect from Maya? Well, uh, if you know Maya, you know, you, you don't know what to expect, except <laughs> in this case, because of this close association that she had with Prince. She worked with him. She performed for him and I think with him um, and has this kind of Prince cover band that she does. Uh, she's, she brought this authenticity to it. Uh, we try and book host for these shows that do have a connection doesn't always happen but we try and in this one it was perfect because every word that came out of her mouth which by the way weren't a lot i mean she was she connect she did some links basically connecting some of the some of the acts but each one of them brought with it this kind of a real authenticity real credibility uh and it came it comes across when you watch the show so she also performs with her her partner, so they do a print song. So it's that she had the double pleasure of doing that as well. Now, how did you pick the name Let's Go Crazy? Why was that so significant for this tribute to Prince? Uh, it wasn't necessarily his most famous, but it's kind of typified, but it, it said that what the show was. I mean, I don't think I would have called the show Raspberry Beret. I wouldn't have, probably wouldn't have called the show, I well, could have called it Purple Rain. Everybody would have known who it was, but this show, th that that song, and and his, it was a song that he did. Uh, he almost did it on every show that he did. Um, uh, he either it was either that or Baby I'm a Star that he would bookend the shows with almost every show, and it just kind of says the title says what the show is. Whether you know, you know, especially when you know the. The second line, the uh, Grammy salute to Prince. Now you know exactly what it is. Right. Uh, and we opened the show with it with with uh, Gary Clark Jr. and her. And it's really it's a spectacular opening to the show. It just really kicks it off. So it was it, it was the it was the right way to go. Well, I, I I can't imagine any other way than the right way when it comes to you. There's been so much buzz though, Ken, about Usher and his rendition 
of Prince's songs. What was that like for you working with Usher in this medium celebrating Prince? You know, I'll be honest with you. Um, I've known him a long time. We've known each other going back to when he was a kid, real kid. Um, we grew a little apart. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly why it was that there was nothing that came in, in between us. It was just, you know, he didn't, he, he was, he was kind of, he wasn't doing a lot of television uh, for a while. Uh, and I really wanted him to do this show. And, and he, it, it obviously came at a time when he was ready to do something. Uh, and it was like, as we say, like butter, you know, I mean, it was like, uh, he, he mentioned three songs. They were the right three songs. Uh, we talked about putting an arrangement together. It was perfect. He talked about maybe bringing a guest, blah, blah, blah. It was like, it was great. And then, then as it turned out, which I think people do know, we did it on the Grammy show and I'm going to just drop it into this show, the version that we did on the Grammys. It was spectacular on the Grammys. It was great. So that's going to wind up as a, as a number on the show. I think I may even use a piece of Alicia who hosted the Grammys introducing right. it. Now, now with Sheila E, what was this like for her? Did this spark some unbelievable memories for her? And how did she resonate as you guys were filming? She was she was wonderful to work with. She obviously, uh, maybe other than Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, who had a long history with Prince and obviously the Revolution who were on the show, uh, uh, she probably had the longest and closest association with him. Uh, I think this was a real joy for her. I think it fulfilled, uh, it checked off a lot of boxes for her. It gave her an opportunity to really salute someone who she really loved. Um, and we used her band as the house band and she and Jimmy and Terry were the co-musical directors. But man, er, er, you know, I would, I normally with these shows, I'll be in pretty constant contact with the MDs uh, just because uh, I, I need to be. With her, it was interesting. She was ahead of me. It was like I, at five o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, you know, all of a sudden I'd check my emails and she'd have the three scratch tracks of songs coming into me which is what we need with these kind of things. We, I need to hear them. I need to know which direction we're going with the arrangements. Uh, I think she I think she loved it all. I really How do you decide which songs you're actually going to use in the show and the artists that you're going to have? Uh, it's a, it's, it, it, there's no, there's no, you can't map it. You know, you can kind of, you can kind of have a sense of, certainly there were some songs that I knew exactly what I wanted to do, which by the way, didn't necessarily mean that the artists wanted to do them. So it's a, it is, it's really, a, it's a mediation. It really is, it's, it's talking to an artist and hopefully they are in sync in terms of what they want to do, that they want to do what you suggest to them, but it doesn't always work that way. And oftentimes what they say turns out to be a better idea. And you just kind of subjugate your ego, uh, even though you'd like to think that you know more than they do. You don't. You can't know as much about an artist as they know about themselves. And the sooner, the sooner you learn that, the better off you are. It doesn't mean that you can't try and steer them away from what might be a bad idea, which, or conversely, that they have a sense that your idea is not a very good one. So it's all collaborative. Uh, I would say with this show, I don't know if there was anybody on the show that I was working with for the first time. So there's already a rapport built. I mean, we kind of, whether it's the second time or the 22nd time, we kind of have a sense of the way the other person works and thinks. So you get past a lot of junk that way and you can get into the substantive part of working together. And that's what this is. It's working together. Um, like most of your productions that are so brilliant, you always wish there may be one or two artists that you could get. Were there a couple for this production as usual for you as well? There always are. You know, there are always artists that are, you know, now more than ever, maybe not now, up until four weeks ago. Uh, these the artists today are on a breakneck schedule. If they're not recording, they're touring. If they're not touring, they're doing TV. If they're not doing TV, they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're always busy. So, 
we, we we do the best we can, and usually I wind up with a with a cast that I'm really happy with. In this case, I was very happy with the cast because every artist was right for this. Uh, there were a couple of artists that I really wish I would have had for this. Um, I was really, frankly, a little disappointed because Lizzo should have done this show. I, I asked her. She knew Prince. There was a relationship. Um, she just uh, she decided not to, and I'm sorry because I think. I think when she sees the show, she'll feel as though she would have been nice if she was there. It's interesting because when you think about that Prince was on, what, four different Grammy Award shows, what would be that Grammy moment for you and Prince? Well, it has to be Prince and Beyonce. It was, that was singular. And it was, uh, it was, I, that was, I think, the second time he was on. The first time he came and did Baby I'm a Star. Uh, but this was like, uh, this was something he really wanted to do. He wanted to be on that stage with Beyonce. And uh, it was pretty magical. He had laid out the whole thing. He, we, he said he wanted to do it. Like we talked on the phone. It was, we were already booking. I was already putting the show together. And this was kind of late in the game for him particularly. And I, I would call him every year and say, I'd love you to do the Grammys, you know, and he would say, how much money you got? I'd say, not enough for you. <laughs> then we bet we we duel a little bit, and sometimes yes, sometimes no. But with this one, it was like he said, "I'll tell you." He said, "Yeah, there's something I'd like to do." I said, "What?" He said, "I'd like to be on that show with Beyonce." I said, "Okay, let me see." So I made a couple of calls. I, at that time, hmm, was Matthew involved? Mother was involved. I don't remember. I think I think Matthew was involved. Anyway, uh, uh, ultimately. Uh, uh, I called him back and said that she's interested. She's not committing, but she, I think she'll want to do this. And he said, oh, that's great, and hung up. And then the next day at 5 o'clock, literally 24 hours later, he said, Ken, can you come out to center staging, which is where he's rehearsing? And I said, okay. And I took David Wilde with me, and the two of us went out there. And without a word, he ushered us into the studio that he was working in. He didn't say a word. The, the band was up on stage. Uh, he picked up the guitar and he ran the whole thing top to bottom that he had put together in 24 hours. The whole, I don't know, six minute, seven minute number, uh, including her parts, you know, his parts and her parts. So it was, and then at the end, it was, there was almost like this ta da, you know, look what I fucking did, you know? And uh, of course, it was amazing then I wound up having to sell it to her, you know, so uh, uh, it was it was a pretty remarkable performance and the one that people remember. Baby I'm a Star was great and there were there are other other things that we did with him that I really loved doing but uh, those were the those were really great. Hopefully you helped make one of his dreams come true too so that's got to be a good feeling as an executive producer with your amazing team that you were able to do that for Prince and I'll pin check one of his bucket list items as well. I think it probably did. Yeah, I, think, I know he was really happy with it. He really was. What, what can you tell us about Prince as a songwriter and something that people didn't know about him, maybe? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, he, was, he was a very private person. He was very shy. Uh, it took a while for him to warm up to you. Uh, I know there were times when I couldn't read him, you know, I, I didn't know whether he was just either putting me on or whether he was uh, making fun of me or whether he was just being kind of like naive about something. I mean, he had he had this, this almost mysterious quality. Uh, as a songwriter, he was a genius. I mean, the simplicity of those songs, lyrically, they were, some of them were complex, but most of them were very basic rhyme schemes uh they were traditional forms verse chorus verse chorus bridge verse chorus and out uh he could jam you know when if you let him loose on the guitar he could do and did 14 16 minute guitar solos that were incredible but he he was very organized and he was very you know those songs are almost the product of his ability to to bring organization and at the same time be incredibly creative 
No, April 21st is going to be the anniversary of four years of his death. What do you think his legacy actually is? Uh, it's, it would it, 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 be for someone much more equipped to discuss that than me. I know, I know that one of the things that always impressed me about him was that he kind of knew what his place was. Um, he knew that James Brown and Jackie Wilson and Marvin Gaye and, you know, the, the, some of the great Motown artists came before him and influenced him tremendously. So he carried some of that and he added himself, he added them to his kit and maybe maybe out of that came something new and different um and he also kind of knew that it was going to move on from him he knew that you know and he was very good about uh nurturing younger artists and working with them judith hill was one of them uh janelle Monet was one of them um there are a number of artists that he just it's kind of it's there are artists like that I, I i find them along the way elton's very much like that you know they have great respect for who came before but they really love to think that what they that they can pass things on so his legacy is going to be strong because his musical heritage is so strong and and his sense of of r b and rock you know it's rare to have both of those things as strong in one artist and he had both of them. Now, now, let's talk about some of the artists. What's the lineup that you can share with us that people will be able to see on April 21st? Oh, I'm gonna, uh, as I told you, it's, uh, it's uh, Gary Clark Jr. And, and her doing Let's Go Crazy. Miguel does an amazing, amazing version of I Would Die For You. Uh, John Legend does nothing compares to you. You've never heard it like this. It's he really truly takes it to church. Uh, St. Vincent Annie Clark does controversy. Uh, there's a, a Juanis does 1999 and it's great. And then her comes back with Misty Copeland, who I had just finished working with on the Grammys when right. we did I Sing the Body Electric. And uh, they do the beautiful ones with Misty. Baller, ballerinaing and and uh, her doing a great version of that song. The Foo Fighters do uh, Darling Nikki, which is not the easiest song to get on TV, uh, but CBS passed it. Uh, you know, and we draw, and they're great. It's 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 an amazing version of it. Uh, we got uh, Chris Martin uh, with uh, Susanna Hoffs doing Manic Monday, the song that Prince never uh, never performed, but he wrote it for the Bangles. He might have had a little thing for Susanna Hops. <laughs> uh, Morris Day and the Time, you know, with Jimmy and Terry and the rest of them, and it's great. Uh, Foo Fighters, I mentioned. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire does a beautiful version of Adore. It's just like, again, not necessarily one of the biggest of Prince's hits, but those voices together, and, and it, it, it's pretty wonderful. Common uh, does Sign of the Times with, uh, with Sheila. Uh, back does Raspberry Beret. Um, Gary Clark does The Cross, which is again a lesser known Prince song, but whew, boy, it's pretty amazing. Uh, Sheila does a medley of Prince songs, uh, then Mavis Staples and The Revolution come out, and uh, uh, on, uh, 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 Maya, Maya Rudolph uh, does something, and uh, which is great. And then Mavis and the Revolution do Purple Rain. And uh, then everybody's out for Baby I'm a Star, which is the way that Prince always ended his show. So I gave away the rundown, didn't have to do that, but it's the easiest thing to do. But it's it tells a story. A you know, it what tells a, a story. What an amazing lineup. Kent, how many people, because we've got to give a shout out to your amazing staff, how many people does it take to make one of these shows that we see and fall in love with and brings back so many memories for us to cherish. Well, I've never like, counted up the number of people on my staff list. I really haven't. Uh, you know, everybody, every, every, most, most of the people that do these shows have done them, we've done them together for uh, Chantal and David Wilde, probably going on 20 years. Ron Basile is uh, probably 30 years. Uh, uh, 
uh, Rack Clark, who's been working on these shows with us, does a great job, and he goes back to the Beatles show. So uh, he's great. Um, uh, lighting and staging, really, they're just great people. Oh, David, yes. David, David, and Chantal are where we, the three of us, are joined at the hip, and and fortunately so because they saved me from myself an awful lot. Uh, and and our script department, uh, Paige Hadley, who has probably, I think she says the first show she did with me was we did a Scott Hamilton after he had cancer. Uh, and that was 1995. So how long is that? Is that 25 years? Probably. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, they're great. They're, it's, it's a wonderful team. Great people. Tune in on Tuesday, April 21st as CBS pays tribute to Prince with Let's Go Crazy. The Grammy salutes Prince and it's going to air at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And then it, it's also going to be available on CBS All Access. And of course, people can learn more at cbs.com. You know, Kim, we're living in a time that is difficult, but yet surreal that we all can appreciate what music has to offer. And Music Cares, it's got to be a good feeling for you right now to see organizations like the Grammy Foundation and Music Cares doing their part to help give back to the artist and absolutely behind the scenes yes it's it's uh you know um i i think uh what i found is that is that particularly in the last in the, almost in the last decade i mean i'm i go way back i go back to before there was uh when music was basically in the cave you know you played it on a drum in the cave with bones um but and and, and, and seriously in the 60s Artists had a conscience. There was a, it was a great time for for giving back, and I think maybe there was one little period there, might have been called the me decade. You know, uh, a lot of a lot of that got lost, and it's really refreshing because I think these kids today, uh, particularly the artists that I choose to work with, uh, have an incredible sense of what this is all about, and. It's really interesting. Probably maybe the best example, and it's because it's the most immediate one for me, uh, is Alicia Keys. I mean, this is a woman who is committed to doing good. And as a matter of fact, I think I haven't read it yet, but I know she just put a book out, and right. I know it's in that book because I talked to her. You know, she thinks that her her mission is to help people, is to use her celebrity to to make a difference, and I see that with so many artists today. Uh, and I'm so happy. I, I've always seen it. You can't generalize because I think there, it's always been there. But I think we're living in a time when, for whatever reason, and I think what's happening right now is going to contribute to even more of that, that artists are going to have a sense of purpose. Um, and, uh, you know, you can see it with some of these benefits and these shows from home and things like that. But I, I think it's here to stay now for a while. And music at the same time it can entertain i've always believed that it's been what i've tried to do on the grammys as much as i could it educates and it enlightens and it informs so you know i'm i have no problem with toe tapping and and making you smile and laugh and giggle when they're funny and fun but man you know i i, I don't mind a good cry whatsoever and in february in january on the grammys this year with several of those camilla cabello singing to her father uh, Billie Eilish in the center of that of that arena, just kind of pouring her heart out in her song, and the the Nipsey Hussle piece that we did. You know, the the the, the music does that. It has it it rings out emotion, all kinds of emotion. So I'm I'm happy that over my years I've been able to contribute to that. And it's interesting too because it's got to excite you when you see the new generation of talent that not only do they have songs that, you know, are healing in so many directions, but this new generation is really, really adamant in giving a, giving a shout out for great causes or giving back to the community as well. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's what I do see, and I'm really pleased to see it. Now, are there any new artists that are intriguing you as we're staying at home and seeing a lot of these live performances at home? Uh, 
uh, I don't know if you know Richard Weiss. He's an agent at William Morris Endeavor. And he has had a few of these things where he just kind of calls up his friends and gets three or 400 people on a, on a Zoom call. And then he'll ask him, and he had a kid, I think the kid's name was Joe J. Ross. But last weekend I, I saw I saw him and there was there was him and there was there was a girl that was she was, that was really amazing. And you know, same show. He's got Randy Newman and Alan Menken and he's got Marcus Mumford, he's got, you know, Miley Cyrus and all and then there are these kids that uh, pretty pretty wonderful Rodney Jerkins. Had introduced the tour, and the kid was—he was really great. He was—he was—he was kind of like, uh, like, and not like Prince, but it, there was a lot of Marvin there, a lot of Jackie Wilson. He was wonderful. You so. know, the w one drawback through the pandemic that just hurt so much is some of these great artists that we've lost. How's that impacted you, and how does that influence what you're doing today now? Well, it's painful. It's really painful. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I didn't really know Ellis Marsalis, although I had seen him at Jazz Fest a bunch of times in New Orleans. Um, uh, I loved Bill Withers. I had him on one or two shows over the years, and I kept on wanting him to come back. Every artist wanted to perform with him, whether it was Bruno Mars or Sting or all of them, because the, 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 those four songs, Lean On Me, Grandma's Hands, um, uh, just the two of us, which he didn't write. Uh, and the fourth one was Use, Use Me. Uh, they were incredible songs and uh, they were just different. They were unbelievable. So I, uh, I kept trying to get him to come out and he kept saying to me, he lived up on the top of Laurel Canyon. And he would say, you don't want me, I'm an old man. Nobody wants to see an old man on TV, you know? <laughs> and uh, he, was, he was great. And uh, uh, John Prine. I met John Prine in probably 1972 in Chicago, and we we hung out, you know, and I had him on, I don't know, half a dozen shows when I was at the PBS station in Chicago. Uh, and then I put him on shows since then over the years. And fortunately for all of us, we had him on the Grammys. He didn't perform, but we honored him in, in January, and Bonnie came and sang Age of Paul Montgomery, which is one of the great songs ever written. So I, you know, my fear is that, is that we, we have a ways to go and that we're going to lose more. And, right. You know, yeah. this is, this is going to be a tough time. You know, Ken, speculation of what 2021 is going to be like for Grammys. Any thoughts or we started planning because you're usually kind of planning things even at this stage, getting ready for Grammys. What should we expect? I don't know. I, I think things are just way too up in the air to even speculate about anything. You know, I, I, you know, I know that, you know, our mayor said not going to be any, uh, any audience, any play, any, what did he say? Uh, shows, uh, um, events where people gather in crowds, right. at least until 2021. Well, that it would be a fun. great celebration. Music is healing to have the Grammys kick off for yeah. 2021 and have your star-studded spectacular performances pulled together like we're going to see on April 21st on CBS. We'll, we'll see. You know, it's, it's exciting to see that we're seeing a live production, a great tribute on April 21st as CBS is helping celebrate and paying tribute to Prince Let's Go Crazy, the Grammy Salute to Prince, which will air at 9 p.m. Eastern Time and also be available and streaming on CBS All Access and people can learn more at cbs.com. We hope you enjoyed this edition of the Hollywood Moment at Home Edition. And remember, tune in Tuesday, April 21st on CBS at 9 p.m. Eastern for Let's Go Crazy, a Grammy Salute to Prince. You can learn more cbs.com and don't forget it'll also be streaming on cbs all access and please tune in to celebrity page nightly you can do so at celebritypage.com and please everyone stay safe at home until next time this is bj chorus you're watching the hollywood moment at home edition if you like the video hit the like button and do subscribe